Laptops nowadays are a stupid level of expensive. Even the low-end Ultrabooks with underclocked i5 CPUs and no dedicated GPUs tend to be at least 600 bucks. And the ones with the best specs can be enough to make your wallet cry. But luckily for you, used laptop prices are usually much better. Just like buying a car, you can often get a much better bang for your buck if you buy a car that's used and, you know, a few years old than ponying up the big bucks for a brand new vehicle. So to make sure that you get the best bang for your buck and avoid spending your hard-earned cash on a crappy laptop, I'm gonna share the 10 things that I make sure to do before I buy any used laptop. Number one, identify what you want to use the laptop for. Force yourself to sit down and really think about why you want a laptop and what you're gonna get out of it. If you're a student or business professional, the three things you wanna look for the most are durability, typing experience, and battery life. You'll probably carry your laptop wherever you go, whether that's in you know, a backpack or a briefcase, and you want a laptop with a solid build quality to hold up over time. You'll be doing a lot of typing on it, so you want a decent keyboard, and you'll also want something that'll last a full day so that you can get as much work done as you want without having to recharge. Gamers are a different story. As a gamer, you might not worry too much about the battery life, but you do care about the gaming performance and the display. Your GPU is the most important of all. Look for laptops with dedicated GPUs like the 1060, 1050 Ti, 980M, etc. The display is also really important. A lot of modern gaming laptops have 1080p displays with higher refresh rates. That would be ideal for you since it would give you a decently high pixel per inch count while still being able to play games higher than 60 FPS. Number two, set a budget. The next logical step after figuring out exactly what you want out of your laptop is to set a reasonable budget that you want to spend. Be realistic about this though. You're not gonna get a 2018 Razer Blade 15 for $500. In the student example, you might be able to get away with two to $300 in spending, as long as you're willing to sacrifice some blazing speed or a higher resolution display. If you're a gamer or a creative professional though, be prepared to hear some groaning sounds coming from your wallet. You'll still have to shell out a lot more money to buy a used gaming laptop with performance parts than you know a student would spend on a cheap Ultrabook. Number three is a bit more of a don't than a do, but it's to avoid sites like eBay unless you have no alternatives. While your selection will be a lot more diverse on eBay since you can buy laptops from all over the world, more often than not you'll pay more for a laptop because of shipping costs, import fees, etc. Not to mention that a lot of eBay sellers list their laptops for higher than they normally sell it for because eBay takes a chunk of their profit. So if you can, stick to local listings on sites like Craigslist, Kijiji, and Facebook Marketplace. And now that I think about it, you can't see the laptop in person or even try it out when you buy from eBay, so yeah, it's definitely best to just avoid ordering used laptops online if you can help it. Number four is to read reviews. If you're buying a used laptop that's more than a few months old, chances are there's already a ton of reviews up online about it. If there are a lot of three-star reviews or lower from people that have had the laptop for a while, you might want to think twice about buying that particular laptop. Things go wrong over time with electronics. I mean, it happens. Older gaming and performance laptops can be especially problematic because the components inside get really hot when they're used. You push enough heat onto some components over a long period of time and things are bound to fail. So what you need to do is look for problems specific to your needs. In the student example, look for reviews complaining about build quality or durability, battery life, and even loud sounds like coil whine or fan noise. If you're looking for a gaming laptop, you might be more concerned about cooling performance and gaming benchmarks. So you might wanna look for reviews talking about overheating issues and thermal throttling. Number five, don't be fooled by the little blue Core i7 sticker. This might be an easy one for some of you, but you'd be surprised about how many people actually fall into this trap. They think that just because the laptop has an i7 CPU in it, it must be fast. Spoilers, those people often get disappointed when they buy that laptop. For example, an i7-2640M in a laptop from 2011 or 2012 is only about as fast as an i3-7167U from 2017. Both are dual-core processors with hyper-threading that have a base clock of 2800 MHz. In layman's terms, those CPUs in a laptop from 2011 would have been decent, but by today's standards, that's on the low end of the spectrum. Anyway, most mobile i7s from the past three to four years are decent CPUs, but this goes back to reading reviews again. If you're not sure if a laptop is gonna be fast enough for you, read the reviews. They usually tell you everything you need to know. And pro tip, if it's a more popular laptop, chances are there's a, is laptop X worth it in 2019 kind of video, so watch those too. Number six, identify if the laptop is easily upgradable or not. 
A lot of modern laptops nowadays have soldered on RAM and hard drives and SSDs that aren't easily accessible. So if you're looking to buy a laptop that you want to keep for at least a few years, you want to make sure that you can update the laptop with new parts if it starts to slow down on you. Another thing to look for is if the battery is easily replaceable. If the laptop is more than a couple of years old, chances are it won't have the battery capacity that it used to, and it's gonna die a lot faster. So you might have to replace the battery at some point, and it's nice to know that you can when you buy the laptop. Number seven is one that fails for a lot of people a lot of the time. It's probably one of the most important points on this list. Use common sense. If someone is selling a laptop that sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If Joe is selling a 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro with a touch bar for 400 bucks, it's probably stolen, broken, or a combination of both those things. Use your heads, people. I'm not saying don't investigate a little and find out why the laptop is priced lower than it should. I mean, maybe the person just doesn't know the true value of the laptop, or maybe one of the USB ports is broken or something and is not a big deal for you. Whatever the case, use your head. If a seller is giving you sketchy vibes or is saying things that don't make a whole lot of sense, avoid it like the plague, because the last thing you want is a broken laptop or worse, being accused of stealing a laptop. Number eight, ask and see if they still have the original box and accessories for the laptop. If they don't, it's not a huge deal, but if they do, it could be a sign that they took good care of the laptop. I always keep my boxes of my more expensive tech products in case they fail and they need to be you know, sent in for an RMA or something. Also, having the box for a used laptop pretty much guarantees that it isn't stolen. A thief isn't gonna break into a house, grab the laptop, and then say, oh no, where's the box? And then rummage through the closet to find the original box for it. Number nine, always ask to see the laptop in person to try it out. Any respectable seller will have no problems with this. If they say no, immediately walk away. Again, use your common sense. Once you meet with the seller, turn it on and try a few things out. If it's a gaming laptop, try playing some games on it to make sure that it performs like it should. Make sure the Wi-Fi still works by browsing the internet. And here's actually a really good tip for you. Go to YouTube and search for the red screen dead pixel test. Playing that video in full screen and looking for any little white nits will instantly show you if there are any dead or stuck pixels in the display. Since you can't just replace your laptop screen easily or cheaply, that's an important thing to look for. Also, look over the entire thing for dings and scratches or other visual defects. If the laptop has them and you're fine with it, it could actually be a really good bargaining chip for you to get the price lower and within your budget. And that brings me to the final point, number 10. Always haggle. It could be a source of anxiety for you to ask someone to lower their expectations of what they're gonna get in return for giving up their laptop, but in a lot of cases, people don't list what they want to sell the laptop for. They price it higher in the hopes that they'll get, you know, a little bit extra for it, but also with the expectation that you're going to haggle with them on the price. If you don't haggle, well, you're just a loser in the exchange and the buyer walks away happy that he or she kind of just ripped you off a little. So it's up to you, but you really should see how low they'll go. It could be the difference between getting the laptop you want priced within your budget or, well, spending more than you originally planned, which let's be honest, that's never any fun. In any case, I hope this video was helpful to you, and if it was, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to support my content. And as always, have a great day.